Well, hello world, Dr. Dan Graham coming right back at you one more time again this week. Uh, like and subscribe, share this video with your friends and family. It might do them some good, save their life, or at least uh, put their minds and hearts at ease because there's some, some hysterical nonsense going on. So find me every week on Dr. Dan, the man on YouTube, and then also uh, check out our latest uh, health and fitness tips and tricks on Body Users Guide. But anyway, we're going to get right into this with this hysterical nonsense that's going on with the coronavirus. Weird stuff going on. You know, we got uh, SWAT teams pulling up with tanks in Dallas, Texas to close bars down. Uh, Shelly Luther was trying to feed her family, keeping her salon open. So uh, she's in jail right now for a week. The problem with that is if you listen to the judge, he was like, well, just admit that you're wrong and say you're sorry and that you were selfish in your in your uh, your actions that you weren't protecting the public well <clears throat> problem with this is that you know there's not a law that actually keeps you there's some mandates but they aren't laws so the problem is this is that when all of a sudden we start seeing these police states and these judges that are are uh, you know trying to to prove a point I mean we're going into a weird weird area that Dr. Dan doesn't like, and I know that a lot of people out there don't like. Um, I know that uh, in New Jersey, some uh, police came uh, into a, a crowd because they weren't social distancing themselves. They weren't more than six feet. Well, that's bullshit because if you know that, if you know anything about the spread and, and epidemiology, the problem is that six foot of social distancing, if you've paid attention to the videos in the past here, we're going to go over them real quick, but we know that if you cough or you sneeze, we know that droplets go out way past six feet, faster than 55 miles an hour. We know that if you use a public toilet, you basically have with every flush 80,000 droplets of fecal material and urine material that go into the air that can contain the virus. You may have a mask on, but the trouble is that probably hardly anyone is actually trained in how to use a mask. So if you're touching it, you know, you're putting it in your purse, whatever's on the outside of that mask is now on your hands. So now you're putting it in your purse, now it's in your purse, you reach down for your keys. Guess what, it's on your hand now. The problem is this, is that, you know, the mask, they don't cover the eyes. So understand this, is that if you think that you're gonna get away from the coronavirus because you're quarantining yourself or you're wearing a mask, um, take some epidemiology classes, do some research, and uh, try and educate yourself because this is actually just fueling the hysteria out there. If you take good care of yourself and you have a strong immune system, you probably have very little chance of having any issues with this coronavirus. Second thing is that, you know, if you're out of shape, if you if you have, you know, uh, different immune system issues, diabetes, you're fat, you got, you know, you, you got uh, uh, heart disease issues and whatnot, you are a weaker person when it comes to the immune system response, so you're going to have some issues. But unfortunately, and this is my opinion, but when all of a sudden people go out and they aren't wearing a mask and they're saying on the news that if you go out without a mask, then you're signing someone's death warrant. Well, understand this is that if you're quarantining yourself and you think you're going to get away from this, as soon as you come out, guess what? The coronavirus is out here, okay? And we already know that uh, there is uh, further mutations. They're saying several mutations are keeping an eye on. They actually have uh, 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 located a, a mutation in um, Europe that we're just waiting for it to come here. But the mutation is called Spike D614G. Problem is, is that it's it's more readily transmissible than the current coronavirus. They're keeping an eye on that. They've sent it for the peer research, but some researchers have actually gotten hold of this thing and they're putting it to the test. They understand that, hey, there's some issues here. So the bottom line is this, is that will society change? Yeah, but understand this, is that coronavirus has been here. Look on the back of a bottle of Lysol. We've had coronavirus here probably longer than we have known for it. I reported it, you know, back in that 2007 report that because some people over in another country were eating uh, horseshoe bats that had coronavirus. University of Hong Kong was warning us way back in 07, this is gonna be a problem. But now we get to the point where everyone is just being hysterical. So um, just uh, uh, my opinion as well is that, you know, I uh, I'm uh, I have lots of patients that own restaurants and I, I was uh, told about a uh, 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 person here locally that, you know, they're serving food to people um, anyway, this is last Thursday night, then all, some, some jerk came, comes along, buys the guy's food, and then calls the cops on him because people were sitting around. Um, 
the report, the police came over uh, the next day and they said, hey, you got people sitting around, uh, social distancing. He's like, look, these people are waiting for their food. They're sitting at a booth with their family. Okay, what do you want me to do? Place a person at one table and then their daughter six feet away and then their son another six feet away? Just what the problem is. So anyway, bottom line is this, is that, you know what, if you are willing to call the cops, if you're willing to snitch on people out there in the... Uh, the world today, you know what, maybe you should stay home, maybe you should cook your own food and leave people alone because what does it matter, it, it gets into this whole issue of, you know, these these do-gooders that have nothing better to do, that's a problem, okay, if people are going to take their own chances and go out without a mask, if they're going to, you know, go eat some of the good food, then let them, let them be, it doesn't affect you any, because you know what, if you don't have, if you don't come out in some sort of hazmat suit, that virus can go in your eyes, so the mask isn't do, going to do a whole lot of good. I had another patient that went into, uh, uh, it was a Home Depot where at Lowe's, and then all of a sudden they were just kind of walking by, you know, and then this jerk, he jumps up and he goes, get the F away from my wife. What's wrong with you not keeping six foot social distancing? I don't know what Dr. Dan would do, but yeah, I tell you what, jerks like that, if you're that worried, then maybe you should really stay home and, uh, you know, call for a curbside you know, put an ad out on Craigslist and have someone that uh, goes and gets stuff for you. But the problem is, is this, is that if you're so hysterical that you go out in the uh, public today here in Gilbert, Arizona, and you're making such a big deal, maybe you should stay home, okay? Maybe you should quit watching so much of the news that's driving this, this hysteria and making people crazy because the, the bottom line is this, and mark my words, is that when you go out into public, unless you're wearing a full hazmat suit, guess what? you're gonna come in contact with it. And even if you do have a full hazmat suit, guess what? It, whatever coronavirus you come in contact with, well, now you're gonna walk into the house. So unless you have some sort of decontamination room when you're walking into your house, you're bringing that stuff into your house. So, now does it cut down on the inoculation rate? Yeah, it does, but understand that the coronavirus is gonna come back. It's gonna come back in the fall. It's gonna be a different strain. Um, we're already seeing this uh, spike 614G that's coming over from Europe that is uh, more readily transmissible than the current coronavirus that we have. Um, there's already been, they, they're already, uh, have, there was an S strain, an L strain. Bottom line is this, is that uh, you got to keep your head about you and realize that this, the world is not coming to an end, but people are sure acting like it. And the problem is, is that it's like a powder keg ready to blow. And, uh, you know, we don't want to see people get hurt, but you know what? You need to educate yourself about really what's going on and not dive into this this hype of all the media and, and the circus that I, I see every night when I go home. But anyway, um, so I want to uh, talk about a couple of weird things that are happening. Now, CDC came out last week and said, look, we aren't seeing much evidence that people are actually building up an immunity to this, okay? Um, we aren't seeing uh, antibody uh, resistance to this thing. So. Um, Unless this virus is something that we have just never seen before and it comes from outer space and it doesn't have an immune system response, well, it would kill everyone, okay? Our immune system builds up antibodies to viruses and that's how it knocks it out of our system. So I thought, you know what, this is bullshit. Let me, let me go on a rant about this. But the problem is, is that I um, had a couple of weird things that, that happened. So I had uh, two patients. Uh, one was a nurse at uh, one of the local area hospitals, another one was a food worker. Uh, same company hospital. Uh, both came down with the uh, coronavirus. The food worker had a husband who works for the state, so they both got quarantined for a month. The nurse quarantined herself. She has three kids, one husband, um, and uh, the kids and the husband, they went about their business. He was going to work, kids were playing, whatever. Uh, both of them, I asked, I said, were you wearing masks? Were you taking any precautions? They said, no, we're just washing our hands and, you know, just kind of watching. So anyway, between the food worker and the nurse, they both came down with the coronavirus. They had the typical symptoms. Everyone else had no symptoms. So in order to get back into work, what they had to do is they had to go through the waiting period in order to know that they were asymptomatic. Then the doctor had to test them and uh, go through other vitals and say, look, this person is not showing any sign, outward signs of the uh, coronavirus infection. Um, and, uh, you know, they're, they're good to return back to work. And so anyway, they got the rubber stamp. Consequently, and this is what is very, very odd, is um, I had... Uh, 
the, I asked the uh, the families of those two girls that uh, they came down with the coronavirus. They also all got, all got tested. One of the fascinating things is this: is that none of them came back with any sort of antibody resistance to the coronavirus, almost like they hadn't been exposed to it. Okay, so. What does that mean? Does that mean that uh, all of a sudden the uh, coronavirus is something new and doesn't have an antibody resistance? No, because it would kill everyone if you didn't have an antibody built up to it. So the problem is, is that when a lot of these uh, uh, places are doing nose swabs, we're pro probably seeing a lot of false negatives on these tests. And um, uh, those of you who are close to me, you know that Dr. Dan's been involved with uh, uh, certain military groups since 2014. And I put it to the test, um, ask those guys, you know, if I need N95 masks, I call them up and I, I get them within hours. Um, they take care of me, I take care of them. Anyway, I put it to the test, I said, look, uh, just like all the doctors, the ER doctors, the ICU doctors that I, I talk with, um, we, uh, we all said, look, um, uh, you know, what the story is, you know, what's the story with this uh, antibody testing? And I can't confirm this, but the problem is that with this nasal swab test, I've been getting reports that it's only 60 to 65 percent effective, and the blood tests are about 98 percent effective. I can't, I can't say that with uh, absolute truth. But anyway, there's a problem with the testing when all of a sudden someone can live with uh, someone with a coronavirus infection, an active infection, and not test uh, for any positive sort of antibody uh, resistance to this because they got it. They're sleeping in the same bed. They're in the same room. They're walking past that person. God only knows what else is going on. But anyway, the bottom line is this, is that uh, there, there is a problem with the testing. Have I seen that coming out in the news? No, I haven't, but you know, just common sense in my uh, training in epidemiology, I know that there's an issue with the testing. So, um, so that's kind of a, a weird thing. Another weird thing was that in the military news this morning, it was reported that if you have a positive antibody test for a past coronavirus uh, infection <clears throat> or a, uh, 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 where you've come in contact with it, your body has responded to it, you may have not even had any uh, symptoms and then all of a sudden you have the, uh, the, uh, this uh, positive test that comes up. They are disqualifying people from uh, going in the military no recruitment whatsoever, um, report in the military news. Um, you know, so th there's a lot of things that I think that uh, are going on behind the scenes that we just don't know about. So I'll try and keep everyone abreast of what the hell's going on with this coronavirus and, and uh, that sort of thing here in uh, Gilbert, Arizona. But anyway, um, appreciate your time. And uh, as always, take it from a know-it-all who tries to know it all because I... Uh, try and keep in contact with a lot of the people that are out, out and about uh, from the hospitals to the military that are uh, making this world go around. So we'll see you next week. Dr. Dan, thank you.